Man, this is weird. How do you think we turn suburban neighborhoods into exclusive clubs that we've kind of sorted by wealth and income today? Well, we live in American history right now, the results of white flight. Now, I think some of you might be wondering what the heck night white flight is. Simply put, it's the large-scale migration of white people from areas that are becoming more racially or ethnoculturally diverse. This migration has often been from urban areas to suburban or exurban regions, which are typically like the same. They're homogenous in terms of race and ethnicity. Now, some of you are thinking, why is this even an issue? Shouldn't people have the right to live wherever they want? In theory, yeah. But the reality is, is that the phenomenon of white flight has a whole bunch of consequences for American society. One of the most significant impacts has been the creation of a racially and economically segregated set of neighborhoods. With massive government investment and subsidies, many predominantly white neighborhoods have remained wealthy and stable, while predominantly non-white neighborhoods have struggled with poverty and disinvestment and a whole bunch of problems. This type of segregation has resulted from white flight also has a whole bunch of negative consequences. Like, studies have shown that kids who grow up in racially and economically segregated neighborhoods often have fewer educational and economic opportunities than their peers who grow up in more diverse areas. And then on top of it, segregation can lead to social isolation and mistrust between different racial and ethnic groups. Just log on to Twitter and take a look at what's happening today. So, how do you think we got to this point? How did white flight become such a significant issue in American society? Well, the origins of white flight can be traced back to the 1950s and the 1960s, where it was seen that middle-class white populations were moving out of cities like Cleveland, Detroit, and Kansas City, and Oakland. This migration was occurring at a time when the civil rights movement was gaining momentum, and racial segregation in public schools had already been declared unconstitutional by the Supreme Court back in the 1954 case of Brown versus Board of Education. Now, by the 1970s, efforts to desegregate schools through busing led to further white migration out of urban areas. Historians suggest that white flight was driven by a number of factors, like the great migration of African Americans from the rural south to the urban north and west, as well as the influx of new immigrants coming from all around the world. Now, some other scholars have said that the term white flight is wrong. It's a misnomer because it suggests that whites immediately leave an area as soon as people of color move in. That's not true. In reality, many whites use violence and intimidation, historical zoning, lot side rules, height limits, and legal tactics to try to defend their neighborhoods from racial integration. Even after 2000, Studies have shown neighborhoods sorting by class and race. And in addition to these social factors, there's a whole bunch of economic reasons for white flight. You got practices like redlining, mortgage discrimination, and racially restrictive covenants have contributed to the overcrowding and physical deterioration of areas with large minority populations. All of these conditions have made it difficult for residents to kind of access basic services like banking, insurance, and social services, and it's increased the cost of living in predominantly non-white suburbs and city neighborhoods. So, what can be done to kind of address this and white flight and its consequences? One solution is to create policies that encourage more diverse housing patterns and promote integration. This can involve measures like affordable housing initiatives and incentives for developers to build in diverse neighborhoods. Additionally, it's really important to address the underlying economic and social factors that kind of drive all of this stuff. We don't talk about it. People are very defensive about it. People really get upset on Twitter about it. So, we'll see what happens. How would you try to fix it?